detected an appropriate range where we should be. So that all that means is that everything is going according to plan. According to plan. Having big mice on the rockets in outer space is according to plan. We are truth seekers, so I was just reviewing some of the headlines about Alex Jones enjoying the feeling of cognitive dissonance as I, I get gaslit. In this instance, Jack Posobiec reminds us that they are using him to go after freedom of speech. If you don't speak out against this, you will be next. Apparently, a Texas jury awarded two plaintiffs who sued Alex Jones the maximum amount, $45.2 million, for apparent defamation. And of course, you know, I'm asking myself, well, maybe, maybe I was wrong. Like, you know, that event looked so weird, the way it all kind of unfolded. Yet that really odd corner, Wayne Carver, who I heard has since passed away. I hope... Uh... I hope they and I hope uh, the people of Newtown uh, don't have a crash on their head later. But. Apparently, Wayne Carver had died Christmas of 2019, so now we can never really figure out exactly what he meant by that. A natural death, foul play, who knows? There's obviously not a whole lot I can safely say about the topic, but, you know, I did have to review the things I was curious about previously, like this video, uh, who features Robbie, the father of Emily, who, as we know, had lost her life on that fateful day. I wouldn't even dare play this video, but I did review it, specifically the comments. So I believe because of at the Alex Jones situation, people are finding these videos and they're commenting again. So here's one with uh, 23,000 views, and you look at the last uh, 24 hours, and you have all these comments. The mere fact that he says, let's start, shows that, you know, I can't keep going on her. Free Alex Jones. People don't forget. And then of course you have your your other dissenter who says that the, this channel has to be removed because it can't it can't show this CNN news footage and factually describe the footage because I guess that's it's insensitive. You go into YouTube, put his name in, search by date, and uh, you see a lot of clips were uploaded. Pretty much the same clip. Uh, this one has an interesting thumbnail. The one that's called uh, Robbie Sandy CNN. There's quite a few of these on YouTube still. The exact same video just reposted over and over again, uh, some with several thousand viewers. Now we have this recent interview with Elizabeth Williamson in conversation with Robbie. So this is like a more recent interview. Uh, of course, comments were turned off. Uh, not a lot of engagement. Uh, this entire interview is about the attacks on Robbie by the con community, or you might say the reality investigating community. I'll play a clip from this interview. Um, it, it marks something that's very sacred to me. Emily's life was very sacred to me. And to um, be around other people that got to share in her life is something that's always special to me. And people that are sharing this experience of losing our kids together is also very special. And so um, I took a lot away from this book and I learned a lot. And um, for anybody that's hearing the subject material and they think um, this is really hard stuff, um, I'm not going to say it's not hard, but I reassure you that it's not too hard and would really try and challenge anybody that thinks they might not want to dive into this to step out of your comfort zone a little bit and see a little bit more about the world that we all live in and that we all share so that we can all be better members of it. And so, yeah, I think that's a pretty good idea just to investigate alternative viewpoints of a complex situation like what occurred in that fateful day. The book that he's talking about is called Sandy, How an American Tragedy Became a Battle for Truth. You know, assuming his narration of how the events played out from his perspective is the truth, you then just have to question human psychology or maybe the integration of psychology and bad luck. How an individual at a certain specific moment in time looks a certain way for certain circumstances that we do not fully grasp in context and then just happens to spark rumors in the minds of millions of people trying to make sense of the world, including myself. I've looked at this whole thing with this event from some of the documentaries that had come out. Um, actually, I had not seen this one here, but yes, there are several documentaries on the topic of the events in that fateful day. And you may have recalled how the gun manufacturer Remington was ruined in a sense because of their relationship to the weapon used by Adam. That same said manufacturer also requested records for the children who lost their lives that day. So I looked at all these interesting details about obscured information and odd corners 
and interesting findings I can't really get into on YouTube. But it looks like uh, Alex Jones, by doing what he did over the years, has really resulted in a legal burial in this case. And I'm left wondering if his uh, attorney sabotaged him. There's a lot of complexity when it comes to phone records and multiple cell phones and the time intervals where text messages may have been sent. We're talking about a period of multiple years. So it's, a, it's an unfortunate and complicated situation with Alex Jones and his lawyer. Um, but the left is just having an absolute field day over this. And that's, you know, causing an immense cognitive dissonant pressure on all the reality investigators who had questions about the event. My real interest in doing this video at this time was actually to look at some Google trend data. So here we have the search term Robbie Parker, right? So you see that for July 3rd through August 6th, the popularity score is at 100, so it spiked. Um, interestingly, it was also very high May 22nd through May 28th. Uh, I assume around that time there's probably some news around it. The issue with Alex's court case that may have sparked that jump. But otherwise, if you look at the timetable, it has demonstrated a gradually increasing popularity um, in a certain states, apparently Alaska, where this term is popular. Um, so with the simple keyword association by Google, these are some of the search terms, which I can't say that are um, appearing there. For the search term Alex Jones, it appears uh, Alaska, as well as the left-leaning states, Connecticut, DC, Vermont, Maine, are fairly interested in the topic. He's trending with bankruptcy and this medicine for some reason. Um, besides that May 15 to 21st time period where Robbie was also very popular, Wayne does not seem to be increasing in popularity. He's kind of stagnant for some reason, which is interesting. Uh, the areas that do have interest, however, are Connecticut, which is really interesting. Cause that's where the tragedy occurred. I guess you may say, uh, if you believe in the justice system, that uh, Alex has gotten what he deserved. Uh, maybe even the protester guy Refit, uh, he also somehow got what he deserved. If you, you know, if you believe that justice is truly blind in our country. Uh, but I all too easily see the viciousness of the whole system and how political animus can drive individuals with that temporal power to bury their political opponent with no remorse, with no mercy, hoping to destroy every ounce of the person's being. And of course, this gives me that feeling of believing there's no helping hand, the consideration that we're truly on our own in this unscrupulous political system. When a very warm, or maybe you might say hot, divisive time period where the leading nation of the free world can go fully red, and not red as Republican, but red as the hammer and sickle. As with the fall of Rome, it does seem like we're seeing a recurrence of previously demonstrated patterns in history. If the advancements in technology are leveraged properly by the most politically unscrupulous, the entire world can turn into a hammer and sickle owned world, which could then result in a dark age that lasts a few hundred years. However, there is a caveat. Potentially, there are factors that are beyond the conventional understanding of most of us concerning our location in the galaxy, spreading of neutrinos, and how special subatomic particles flying through space can exert effects on Earth and its populations in a way that can alter otherwise predictable trajectories. You might say this is a very secular way of looking at potential opportunities to escape the social trajectories predicted by history and human anthropology. We'll also have to consider what many religious texts may suggest, especially the Bible concerning an apocalypse. As I started to touch upon it in a previous video, recognizing the potential of unrealized opportunities feels nice, but we shouldn't let this perception of help distract us from seeing reality in its true ruthlessness and adjusting our own behaviors to adapt to that ruthlessness. Again, as predicted by birds who operate according to the Nash equilibrium, each making their own movements in relation to one another's movements. At this point, I may be rambling a bit, so I'll leave you now with these thoughts. Till next time, peace.